There was uh, another mass shooting in America. This time uh, it happened last night in Las Vegas. Now, this was during a country music festival. I'm not a huge fan of country music, um, but that doesn't mean that the people who are deserve to be shot at, uh, which unfortunately, that's what happened. Uh, the shooter, of course, has already been identified. I'm going to say his name once, um, and then I'm not going to say it anymore. I really don't want to give this guy any credit. Um, just to make sure that, that people don't try to do copycats. And, and that's why we normally uh, try not to say his name um, in order to, you know, not have people follow in his footsteps. Because, again, that would be a complete uh, disaster. But this man is identified as Stephen uh, Paddock. Now, he's a retired man in his 60s. Um, and he decided for some reason or other, we can't exactly ask him because uh, he did not survive. Uh, but decided to open fire on a crowd from a 30-second story window. Now, he fired into a crowd of 22,000 concert goers. Uh, now, the results of that, insofar as 58 people were uh, unfortunately killed, over 500 injured. Those numbers are preliminary. They're expected to possibly go up. I hope not. Uh, but as we can tell right now, it's an incredible tragedy. And right now is now the deadliest shooting in modern American history. But unfortunately, again, and this is my cynicism showing through, and I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think that it will stay the deadliest uh, shooting in American history for all that long, knowing how bad it's gotten in this country. Uh, now, I want to show you um, Donald Trump, President Trump's response to this shooting um, in a clip here. Uh, let's take a look at that. We are joined together today in sadness, shock, and grief. Last night, a gunman opened fire on a large crowd at a country music concert in Las Vegas, Nevada. He brutally murdered more than 50 people and wounded hundreds more. It was an act of pure evil. The FBI and the Department of Homeland Security are working closely with local authorities to assist with the investigation, and they will provide updates as to the investigation and how it develops. I want to thank the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department and all of the first responders for their courageous efforts and for helping to save the lives of so many. The speed with which they acted is miraculous and prevented further loss of life. To have found the shooter so quickly after the first shots were fired is something for which we will always be thankful and grateful. It shows what true professionalism is all about. Hundreds of our fellow citizens are now mourning the sudden loss of a loved one, a parent, a child, a brother or sister. We cannot fathom their pain. We cannot imagine their loss. To the families of the victims, we are praying for you, and we are here for you. And we ask God to help see you through this very dark period. All right, so uh, that's some of his statement. He goes on, he wants to give some uh, Bible verses, and, and, and that's fine. That's actually a perfectly fine statement. Obviously, reading from a teleprompter, somebody else wrote that, but you know what? That's great. Um, that statement was fine. Whoever wrote it, great job. Okay, and, and good job for Trump uh, for not going off the script and, and, and actually just reading it. Wonderful. You should do that more often. <laughs> now, so that's all I got to say about uh, Trump. Again, great statement. Stick to that. Please don't say any more. Perfect. It's perfect. All right. Now, as for the shooter, um, again, I'm not going to say his name anymore, uh, but there are some more details coming out about him. Um, now, I will refer to him not as a shooter, but as a terrorist, because I believe that's what he is. Um, so... And, and, and yes, I'm calling him a terrorist, and I also will point out that a lot of the 
people in mainstream corporate media are not calling him a terrorist. And I think that's very, very interesting, actually. Uh, now, maybe it could be the fact that he's white. Um, white people apparently can't be terrorists when it comes to mainstream corporate media. Maybe some sort of unspoken rule. I don't know. Uh, but uh, every article I've read, oh, lone wolf. Oh, we don't know the motive yet. Uh, not a terrorist. Not part of any international terror group. That's the only time it comes up. Um, <laughs> apparently, you have to find a motive first uh, before you can even dare to call a white person a terrorist. But hey, man, if you're Muslim or black person, then immediately it's terrorism and immediately it's, um, you know, you don't, you don't need to find a motive. It's just terrorism straight up. So I always find that uh, incredulous uh, when the news does that. Uh, very, very frustrating. Uh, but anyway, there are uh, details about his personal life. And for the most part, it's actually very mundane. This guy has no history of violence. There's nothing. Uh, well, the one interesting thing that people have found out about him is that um, and his father was uh, apparently on the FBI's most wanted list for a string of armed robberies. I didn't know that. Now, of course, um, I don't know what kind of impact it had on this guy. For most of his life... 60 years he did nothing and then i don't know maybe he snapped i'm not sure what happened um but again we we don't know we don't know there's no motivation on that uh for this terrorist action so and and look i, I don't know if i necessarily care what kind of motive he has because nothing sh should be able to explain why you went up into a a, a a tall building and just indiscriminately fired into a crowd. Now, as for the weapons that he used, well, from some of the video from the scene, it seems possible that he had possession of perhaps an automatic uh, weapon or had taken certain weapons uh, and modified them to be, uh, to function as an automatic weapon. Um, so there, and apparently there are different mods that you're able to, uh, get for those guns to, to, to turn them into uh, from semi-automatic into an automatic type of weapon. So, uh, in fact, uh, police had found 10 different weapons uh, in his hotel room, some of which, as I mentioned, could have been altered, may have been altered to function as an automatic weapon. So, and, and the other thing is, I don't think maybe, I don't think he snapped. It seems like he did plan this. So, there, there seems like a bit of premeditation now, as far as the international terrorism thing angle goes, uh, ISIS, strangely enough, took credit for this. But again, ISIS takes credit for everything. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't exactly take them at their word. <laughs> now, that's all the stuff that we know right now. Obviously, there's going to be more stuff coming out. Um, you know, for example, they're going to be going through his social media. They're going to be talking to people. I believe they already talked to his uh, ex-wife, his brother. And, you know, there will be more information that's going to come out. But what we know right now is, is this was a retired guy who just liked to go to the casino and the concerts and showed no outward reason for doing what he did. So, again, we don't know. And, again, I'm not sure I necessarily care. <laughs> but I'm just trying to give you all the information that, that I know so far. Now, on this, uh, I, you know, I didn't really want to cover this story and and reading through it i mean yes it's important for people to know what happened uh, and for of course the the victims to be you know honored because these people were you know they were doing nothing they're innocent people and their lives are forever changed or destroyed so and and of course it's important to talk about the victims but as far as uh, the shooter and uh, this terrorist and, and, and why he did what he did. And it, for me, it's like, I ask myself, what's the fucking point, right? Uh, look, yes, this is another mass shooting and, it, and it's an absolute tragedy and it's an absolute disaster. But unfortunately, I, I don't think covering it is going to lead to anything happening. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I do want things to change, right? I just have no faith in the system for it to change. I mean, look, it didn't happen after Sandy Hook. When it should have, it didn't happen after the Pulse shooting. It didn't happen after any other mass shootings that we've had. So why would anything change now? We've unfortunately shown that our society is, is one that's going to only set 
uh, or send thoughts and prayers and then move on and not do anything until the next mass shooting. And then the same thing. And that frustrates the hell out of me. And it, it frustrates me that we don't do anything because of how broken our political system is and our climate is in America. All we're going to do is we're going to start hearing talking points. I mean, it's already started. You know, what is it? Uh, Gateway Pundit put out a story. Oh, my God, he's a Democrat. He's a, you know, loves Rachel Maddow. See, it's the left. They're all violent. Uh, and that was based on false information that was coming out as well. Fake news, call it what you will. But it's already started. And uh, it's, it's, and it's frustrating. It's frustrating. And then, of course, there's already shouting online, uh, the, the different forums, Facebook, Twitter, everybody's after each other. And then that'll die down. And then we move on to the next one. So, I mean, for me, like personally, when it comes to mass shootings, again, I don't like to talk about them because I think Sandy Hook was the, was the point of no return. If we as a country don't do anything after a room full of children end up getting slaughtered, then we're not going to do anything. I mean, shouldn't have that been the lowest point, the point of where the nation should wake up and say, oh, you know what? Oh, my God, maybe we should do something about guns. But we're not. But we're not. And, you know, at least not politically. Again, we've got a lot of politicians that are bought by the gun manufacturers. And right now, I think we as a, a nation treat money as more important than human lives. And, and we're so politically divided. I mean, people no longer pay attention to the facts if it doesn't fit their sides predefined narrative so it really seems really hopeless in my opinion uh for any type of change to happen and now it, it's it's really really difficult for someone like me to not be discouraged and uh here i am I, i'm super discouraged and i'm openly admitting it to you guys and uh on this issue i i don't know if we're ever maybe not ever ever is a strong word but if we're going to change at least in the immediate future now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't stop trying, that we shouldn't stop fighting for change. And, and that's the other thing. You can be incredibly discouraged and very, very cynical as I am and still fight and still fight for change. And, and that's, of course, because the fight for change, the fight to try to save people's lives is a fight worth being part of. But again, I, you know, cynicism, like that's that's my mood today that's how i feel and every time i see one of these mass shooting stories and i talk about this this is this is where i end up that i don't feel like we're we're able to make any sort of you know positive change with the way our political system and our and our environment is right now and that's i think that's the biggest tragedy of all because if we don't do anything we're going to see and we're just going to keep seeing stuff like this happen over and over and over again and it absolutely breaks my heart so you know look my thoughts are with the families i i don't believe in prayers um but i want it to be more than just my thoughts going to these families i actually want to do something to prevent this from happening to someone else i can't go back and change it we can't go back and change what happened to the people at at Sandy Hook or Pulse or any of the other mass shootings or this one. But by God, we can actually do something for the future. And and we need to. And we need to put all the pressure that we can on the politicians to stop taking that money from the gun manufacturers and actually fucking do something that the majority of the American people actually want us to do. And skip the echo chambers and, and, and skip the talking points and all the bullshit and just actually fucking do something. Because I'm tired of these stories. I'm tired of mass shootings. I'm tired of the media making this into a 24-7 fucking spectacle in order to get nothing but ratings. I'm sick of all of it. And I'm sure you guys are too. So we got to do something. Things got to change. And we just, we got to keep fighting for that change or else nothing is, is, is going to happen and it's going to keep getting worse and worse. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.